On today's show, we get our first look at the Palette 2 Pro. Hey, welcome back to The First Layer. My name's Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here three times a week, every Tuesday, Thursday, and live stream Saturday night. This is the show that explores the world of 3D printing. If this is your first time here, by the way, go ahead and hit that little bell and that subscribe button down below so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode here on The First Layer and you don't miss a thing. On today's show, we're talking about the Palette 2 Pro. You can see I've got the box here. Um, this was lent to us by one of the fans of the sh one of our fans of the show. His name is Stuart Stotts, and uh, we thank Stuart for bringing it by. I've had it now for uh, I guess about five days, about a week, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how the Palette Pro works, what it's for, and can you use it with any printer. So let's just jump right into it and let's get into the meat and potatoes of it. We did some prints with it yesterday um, and, you know, I still haven't gotten the calibration down quite yet. So um, we are going to get there, but here's what we've, we've been able to print so far. I'll leave that one up there because I have another sample right here. I'll just go to my over-the-shoulder shot. So here we have the purge block. And you can see that the purge block has a lot of color in it, in it. Now, this purge block, even though it's long and flat, is a significant waste of material. Now, I'm sure that you can calibrate this, um, but when I weighed the two side by side, this is the little keychain that it made, and you can tell that it didn't calibrate it right when you flip it over. You can see that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of messed up on the calibration, but... There is definitely a learning curve. Now, um, I think you can adjust the purge block for these. I'm pretty sure that you can. I haven't been able to find that yet, but I'm sure there are many um, videos out there by Mosaic Manufacturing, the people who make the Palette 2 and the Palette 2 Pro. And the key ring itself is very solid. Um, this is their, their Palette, I guess, logo and or their mosaic logo um, so if you're interested in a little bit more information about palette after we're finished today i'm going to put a link down in the description below for you to go to mosaicmanufacturing.com now this was started as a um, replacement for the original palette and palette plus now we had the original palette uh and pal or palette plus palette plus was in here um, a year ago, and we had such a hard time getting it to work properly um, and put the filament out. One of the biggest problems was, and we'll just head over to the over-the-shoulder shot again, is was the join between the two filaments. Now, in the previous iteration, it would slice it on an angle and try and bring those two pieces together with a little bit of heat. They've significantly improved that, and we're going to open up the machine, and I'll show you what they've done there. Um, they've significantly improved that so that this is very, very strong weld. And you can see here, this is sort of the calibration um, length that it puts out when you're calibrating the machine. So we have blue, red, yellow, and white in our um, palette, loaded into the palette. This is all PLA, by the way. Uh, the palette and the, or the palette 2 and the palette 2 Pro, um, there are some significant differences between them. Uh, one is that the palette 2, the palette 2 is a multicolor machine. I'm not sure if it's a multi material machine, but it is a multi color machine. Let's get a quick close up of the machine here. We'll just turn it so you guys can see it a little bit better. I'm going to try not to wash out the screen. So it's a fairly small unit. It's not very big. comes with mounting hardware for you. It also has a magnetic cover that you can take on and off. We're just going to set that aside. So inside, you can see that there are 
four lines of filament that come into the palette and we have our blue, red, yellow, and whites, as you can see. And when you go ahead and set the machine up, um, it has a beautiful little touch screen here and it kind of guides you through everything that you need to know. One of the biggest improvements is this mechanism right here over the previous iteration. Now this is your slicing core right here. This is uh, user replaceable. Um, when the when things get uh, a little dull, you can replace them, and all you simply do is just take out the thumb screw, pop the uh, pop the unit out, and replace the blade as you need to. This is also where it does the filament fusing is in there as well. So the heat tube that fuses the two filaments together is right there as well. Down below here, in where you see this area, this is where it actually cuts the filament and then you have literally four extruders. Now, I don't know if you can do a CMYK with this um, particular printer, I don't think you can, but Mosaic has done a great job in producing uh, some software uh, that works in the cloud. This machine has an incredible amount of features to it. You can either use it independently with an SD card like you see there, or you can actually hook this up to another unit that they have and you can actually run this right through the cloud entirely. Your printer and the Palette 2 Pro, or the Palette. Um, just to give you an idea, here is the manual that uh, it comes with. We'll go back to the over-the-shoulder shot, and I'll just kind of give you an idea. This is their get it start, Getting Started manual. And everything that comes in the box um, is located right inside this manual. I know it looks a little washed out, but we'll do our best to. So you can see that it's got all the parts there. Everything that you get, you get some Velcro squares, an extruder clip, some uh, outgoing tubes, large, medium, and a small, your SD card, a screwdriver, uh, USB cables, um, spare parts as well. Uh, the internals, there's... Right here is, uh, let's start with uh, number one. Right up here, we'll just uh, kind of go back to, there we go. So right up here, you can see that there's two wheels here. That is your scroll wheel. Uh, down below, or right beside that, on this side, is your outgoing drive gear. You have your buffer switch, which is right there. I know it's kind of tough to see. If I turn this any more towards camera, it's going to wash out the screen. I don't want to do that. So... Um, we have the slicing core, which is right here. This is your slicing core. Your touchscreen, of course. Your buffer area. This is the area that the um, filament will come into, and, and it's a buffer zone so that you can get the proper amount of filament uh, running. You've got a homing switch, um, cutting wheel, a merger, an ingoing drives, and filament runout switch. So each one of these has a filament runout switch on it, so it'll know when you're out of filament. And you can tell it, apparently from what I've understood, you can tell it to go ahead and uh, either use another material or wait till you reload material into the unit. Now, setting up the Pro couldn't be any easier. There's, you can either mount it to a wall, there's mounting brackets, or you can put it on a stand, which is what we've done. You've got a piece of Bowden tube that goes in three different sizes, a large, a medium, and a small. And then you connect it up to uh, a filament inlet uh, that works really well as well. It also comes with a, a rack to hold your four filaments. We don't have that with us today. And it can be set up on multiple different printers from an Ender 3 all the way up through to more expensive machines. Um, like direct drives, uh, all kinds of different, uh, uh, different printers. Um, it works with both direct drive and Bowden setups. If you're going to get your first print going, you want to go to Canvas 3DIO, and that's where you'll slice your models. So you're going to slice your models in the cloud. Now, I understand that you can um, go ahead and... Uh, not only slice the cloud, but you can use something like Simplify 3D. You can set up profiles in Simplify 3D 
uh, is my understanding. There we go. You can access the filament paths by taking out the little thumb screws down on the bottom and every area is accessible by those thumb screws. Uh, what else? You can, yeah, that's pretty much it. So the book itself just has some very basic stuff. So you really want to go up to a mosaic manufacturing to find out more about how to work with your palette. They also have a YouTube channel um, showing multiple ways to set this unit up with other printers. Uh, we set it up on the CR-10S Pro. It's not necessarily made for the CR-10S Pro. We haven't got a proper profile for it. So the problem that I was having, of course, as we saw here earlier, is that my prints should have been like this side, but they obviously didn't come out that way because um, I haven't properly set up the the Bowden uh, setup for the CR-10S Pro. If I was using just the standard CR-10, I probably would have had better success. Uh, I did follow the instructions through calibration and follow the instructions through to doing this. And uh, now, let's talk about wastage for a minute. How much does this actually waste? Well, right now I can see, and I, I'm going to do more investigation with this, but right now this is 15 grams of plastic. Not much in the grand scheme of things, but our keychain is only three grams of plastic. So there's five times the waste that you would find with any other um, multi-color or multi-material machine that has to do a purge block. And if you remember when we talked about the CRX, it kind of suffers from the same problem where it has to do a purge block in order to make your part and make it come out properly. Um, and that purge block a lot of times can be more plastic than the part that you want to print. So economically, you know, as far as filament goes, I'm sure you can adjust this. I just haven't figured out how yet. But um, I think as far as wastage of plastic, it's still something that has to be worked on and developed. And I think they're going to do that more in uh, respect to uh, as they do firmware upgrades and, and they do more upgrades for the Palette 2 and the Palette 2 Pro. Now, from what I understand, you can put multi-material in the Palette 2 Pro. Uh, when you're slicing, you're going to tell it what materials you have on each of the inlets. Uh, so if you wanted to put water-soluble material in it, you could. And, uh, you know, have easy melt-away sort of uh, material when you uh, want to do support. So... Um, we did two of them. They both turned out the same way, uh, almost exactly the same way. There's a little bit of blobbing on the on the purge block, but nothing serious. Uh, I think that um, for all intent and purposes, is it a machine that I would consider buying today? Yes, it is. And I'll tell you why. Because so many times I do multiple prints. Um, this allows me to do more than just one color at a time. I can set it and forget it sort of thing. There's two, like I said, there's two models of this, the Palette 2 and the Palette 2 Pro. They both come complete with everything that you need to get ready to use it with your printer. You may have to uh, create a profile for it or contact Mosaic. Maybe they already have a profile. Um, the cover is magnetic, so you, it's easy to access everything in the inside. Not like the previous model um, that uh, you, you really had to take the whole thing apart to get to anything that you needed. And changing out blades and things like that were not quite as easy as this unit has made it. They've done a lot of time, research, and development on this, and I think they've got a, a winning product. Now, they are not sponsoring us. Like I said, uh, Stuart, uh, one of the fans of the show, he uh, brought this into us, so I thank Stuart for bringing this in, letting me play with it. Um, I would consider buying this. This one is $7.99 US um, for the Pro, and it is $5.99, I believe, for the um, Palette 2. Palette 2 is a multicolor machine, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. If I am, I'm sure somebody's going to let me know, but... 
The Palette 2 Pro apparently is a multi-material machine and it will mix all of your materials for you. So with that said, that is the our look at the Palette 2. And I like it. I would recommend it for anybody that wants to do multicolor prints and not have to worry about it. I'm going to thank, of course, Jess, who is in the house today. There she is right there. She's uh, helping us out, make sure that we uh, get this right, as it were. I uh, also want to thank Spool3D, spool3d.ca. They've got everything that you need for your 3D printer. Now, they don't sell the Palette 2 or the Palette 2 Pro. You have to go through um, Mosaic Manufacturing for that. But they do have printers, filaments, and uh, all the parts and accessories you could need for your upgrade or next build. So check them out today at spool3d.ca. Print it right, print it with Spool3D. So with that said, my friends, don't forget, if you are new here and this is your first time, hit that like button. Also, go ahead, smash that subscribe button. Smash the little bell so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode. And just so you know, down below, I'm going to put a link to our new merch. Um, I haven't got my new t-shirt yet. But we have, with the new logo, we've got uh, our new merch is available from Teespring. And we will put a link down below if you're interested in a coffee cup, a hoodie, or a t-shirt for you or a loved one. You can go ahead. And that uh, all goes to supporting the show. And uh, that's it. That's all for me. So until next time, my friends, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.